before we get into the details of this awesome Schumacher L1R, I just want to confirm to you guys, or reaffirm, that I am not sponsored by Schumacher. I am sponsored by a few different brands, but Schumacher isn't one of them. I'm not going to be sponsored by a car manufacturer for the sake of this channel, purely because I want to drive lots of different things, I want to try lots of different things, and I want to show you guys in the most unbiased way possible, certainly for the review series, obviously the race series, we're just going to push whatever we think is the best, the fastest car at the time, and we're going to try and win. But, Island RC, thank you very much for this car. You'll find out how good it's been in this three month review. But again, I'm not sponsored by Schumacher, although I think the company is awesome. We're going to be totally honest and go for it. Island RC, baby. The Schumacher L1R. Is it the carpet slayer that we all know, we've all heard of? Watching Alowski go around carpet like lightning? The build? The quality? Is it there? One thing's true, we're about to find out. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing a three month review, update on the Schumacher L1R. It's not gonna be an in-depth review on all the technicalities of the car. I'm gonna put all of those in the description, but we are gonna be going over the build, the drivability, the cost ability, and the maintenance and ability, ability. The maintenance. The most important things that we all look for in a buggy Let's go. So, the elephant in the room, belts. The biggest difference between the Schumacher line of vehicles and a conventional kit is the Schumacher L1R has a belt drive system as opposed to your conventional shaft driven car. Both cars feel very similar on track. There is definitely some advantages and definitely some benefits that you can feel via running a belt and equally some benefits on a shaft driven car. It depends very much what you like, how you drive. Both styles of car are gonna fit your driving. They're not gonna make you slower. They might make you faster, but either way, they're both gonna go in a straight line and they're gonna do exactly what they're supposed to do. But let's just talk about a belt quickly. So there is a lot of nuance to this, but the basic physics are a shaft drive car will create more inertia. Inertia will make the car twist from side to side or have other effects down those lines. The kind of weird feels you get every now and again. This comes from the motor, the drive shafts, and basically any shaft or any object that's on the car that's spinning is gonna create a rotational inertia, or it's gonna create a centrifugal force, which is going to obviously have certain effects on the physics of the car. It is big enough. There are companies out there like Techno who've been experimenting, flipping motors, front and rear diffs, sort of swapping them around to try and get that balance from inertia. Also, what it can do, when the car's in the midair, obviously with the more shafts, it can also create the car to be more twisty, more turny sort of in the air as those forces are spinning. If belt cars have all their rotational inertia going front to rear as opposed to side to side, belt cars have all of that inertia, all of that centrifugal force going from front to back. Theoretically, what that will do is it will create a smoother car going into the corner, out of the corner. So that's my opinion on the belt. Let's talk build. I've got to say, I was really impressed with the overall build from the Schumacher car. The bags, clearly labelled. The manual 
extremely in depth. I would say in some places for a new person, it might be slightly over complicated, but I think in general, lots of people go into this hobby to learn. I think more information is probably better. So the detail in the illustrations, very good. The information, loads of it. There's lots of information as you go. So the bags, they're all nicely labeled. The illustrations, the manual is full of information, absolutely full, so top marks there. The build itself, I would say for a new person, it's probably slightly complicated, although the instructions are that good. I think anybody could build it. I think the quality of the parts, again, awesome. Really very, very good. There was only one area, one issue that I had, which I'll bring up later in the uh, video, but yeah, ultimately the build was good. The parts were good. The quality was good, you got loads in the box, you got wheels in the box, which to be fair, is a rarity nowadays, so that's a massive plus for me, awesome. So, two points I think you'll be interested in if you're gonna be buying the car and you are looking for just a couple of tips, just a couple of things to be aware of, then these are the things that I would be aware of when you're building the kit. Number one, be cautious when you're building the diffs. When the top plate is going onto the diff cup, Take your time on this area. It can be a little bit tricky. Uh, just take a little bit of extra time shimming the diffs. What you'll probably find if you don't get the shims spot on initially is when you pop in that fourth screw, the diff may feel tight. It may be fairly locked up. Don't worry. You just need to take it apart again, correct the shim. Just one of those things. You just need to shim it correctly. If you shim it to the book, I found I shimmed it to the book and it was slightly too tight. Again, this is in the book, but it's just a point of interest. Just take some extra time on the diff and just make sure once the cup is with the top plate and it's all screwed up, that it spins nice and freely and it's not locked up, it's not notchy or anything like that. Number two, with the pistons being molded, I found that they didn't perfectly fit the body. I found that I had to make a small adjustment on the piston, just took a little bit of material off with some 800 grit sandpaper, literally the tiniest amount. When you put the piston in the shock body, it wasn't smooth. Um, it needed just a little bit of tweaking just to make sure that was smooth within the shock body. I think that's a really crucial thing to remember and to check, especially if you're a new person coming into the hobby. The kit's amazing, don't get me wrong. The molded pistons are naturally sometimes not gonna be perfectly circular. So you may just need to slightly adjust the piston. Don't take too much material off at all. We're talking a minute amount. But ultimately, if you build this car and the shocks are locked up or they're even slightly locking up, it is gonna massively make a difference to the car. So just make sure before building the shocks that that shock body and the piston are perfectly smooth. Perfect. Drivability, let's talk drive. This car is great out of the box. I did make a couple of tweaks. The very first night I got the car, I had a practice day with it. In the start of the day, you can see it in one of my later or my earlier videos. And yeah, I made literally three changes to the car and it absolutely transformed it out of the box. And this was running on AstroTurf. So let's just quickly get those out of the way and then we'll talk about how the car feels or how I thought the car feels on the track. I found with the kit set up, the rear shocks, the rear of the car, didn't feel quite as plush, quite as smooth for what I wanted. I needed a little bit more rear grip out of the car. So I changed the pistons in the rear to a 2.1. I also changed the rear spring. I changed that to a black spring and the same oil, which was the recommended kit oil. And wow, what a difference that made. It locked the rear end in, it put all the plushes in the car. It was amazing over the bumps. I literally recommend everyone to do that with the kit out of the box if you're racing on Astro. I also did change the front pistons from a 1.6 to a 1.7. And again, just to put it a little bit better over the bumps and it was just, yeah, it was godlike out the car. Uh, it was amazing out of the box and yeah, no issues about it, make those changes. So the car itself, out the corner, wow. It is so smooth and so direct out the corner. It is, yeah, it's really good. Going into the corner, there's nothing weird. It doesn't do nothing. It doesn't lean in any weird ways. It just goes into the corner, through the mid and out the other side, just perfect. I even tested the car from outdoors to indoors on carpet and a lot of the time with the cars that I've had before or just my general setup, I'll need to tweak it from outdoors to indoors. It could have been optimized a little bit, but from one setup to the other, it was great. I mean, 
The car was locked on the track from outdoors, going over the bumps beautifully, landing beautifully, in the corner, out the corner, braking. It was truly fantastic. I took the car indoors, I made no changes to it. I fully expected a four wheel drive car indoors to get that typical grip roll, typical edginess, and I gotta say, it was just absolutely stuck to the track. It was as smooth as anything, probably too locked in. So yeah, indoors to outdoors, fantastic. I am gonna work on the setup for the indoors. I think that is something I definitely need to do, but it is stable and it, yeah, it comes out the corner. Lightning speed. I think a key benefit to running this car, the cost of the car itself, although I can't speak if you live in the, the US or, or another country, but certainly in the UK, the cost is the good, the price is good in comparison. Um, the parts, they're readily available and they're extremely well priced. Option parts of this car are very, very well priced. A good example is the front anti-roll bars or the rear anti-roll bars. As a comparison, there's certain brands which you'll get one, two roll bars for sort of 15, 20 dollars possibly. I think Jumac could do a full set of like fronts, five roll bars, and I think it works out to be about 19, 99, so probably 25 dollars or so. So, yeah, the option parts of this car are extremely well priced, the spares are well priced, they're readily available. So, yeah, support wise, Schumacher cars, very good, very good. It's got a big team, certainly here in the UK. It's massively growing in the US. So, yeah, I, th yeah. I think as far as support goes, knowledge, information, certainly in Europe, growing in the US, they do a really good job of supporting the hobby, supporting the car, supporting the drivers, and they're always developing it, so great. So the question we ask, should you buy a Schumacher L1R? And the answer is, absolutely. Is it better than a team associated? Is it better than an X-Ray? They're all awesome cars, let's face it. They've all got massive pluses, massive bonuses, massive differences. All I can say is if you do end up with one of these, you're not gonna be disappointed. 